welcome to our channel medicos learning decks here we will discuss easy mnemonics high yield topics and integrated revision of topics related to medicine so let's start so this is the second part of the murmur topic so here in details we will talk about the systolic and diastolic murmur and what happens when valsalva or standing whether which murmur will decrease and increase okay so let's start so now systolic murmur diastolic murmur and the continuous murmur right so systolic can again be divided into ejection systolic pan systolic and less systolic okay and diastolic can be divided into early diastolic mid diastolic and late diastolic or just pre systolic okay so earlier we learned that diastolic will start with s2 to s1 so here if we find the murmur we call is a diastolic murmur and systolic from s1 to s2 right and if it's the whole from s1 to s2 to the whole cycle so it will be continuous murmur so systolic murmur where we find aortic stenosis pulmonary stenosis and the opposite of this two that is mitral regurgitation and tricuspid regurgitation okay early systolic uh, ejection systolic is found in aortic stenosis pulmonary stenosis and also asd that is atrial septal defect okay so in aortic stenosis this pattern known as crescendo decrescendo pattern will be seen see the murmur will rise and in the mid cycle it will be at its peak and then again it will come down so this is the crescendo decrescendo type of murmur it is specific to aortic stenosis right now pan systolic pan systolic is found in mitral regurgitation and tricuspid regurgitation and also ventral septal defect vsd okay and less late systolic defect if it's found in the uh, late stage of the system right so for this there is one mnemonic that is ape ape or monkey we know so ape a p r ejection systolic a p that is uh, atrial aortic stenosis and pulmonary stenosis aortic stenosis and pulmonary stenosis a p are ejection systolic and we will use this for uh, diastole murmurs also see early diastolic murmur a and p so a and p are ejection systolic and early diastolic early diastolic okay so a stands for uh, ap ejection systolic and early diastolic in ejection systolic it will be aortic stenosis pulmonary stenosis right and in diastolic it will be aortic regurgitation and pulmonary regurgitation okay in mid diastolic it is mitral stenosis and tricuspid stenosis that is opposite of it right regurgitation so it will be stenosis mitral stenosis and tricuspid stenosis and also in mitral stenosis late diastolic murmur is also seen right see mitral stenosis tricuspid stenosis and the opposite of the two that is aortic regurgitation and pulmonary regurgitation so early will be ape early will be ape and the rest will be mid diastolic and late diastolic okay now continuous murmur that is throughout the whole cycle the murmur is heard so it is continuous murmur most commonly asked is patent ductus atriosus patent ductus atriosus right so here we can see throughout the whole cycle the murmur is being heard right the murmur is being heard other causes of uh, continuous murmur we will see here okay later on we will see once see here uh, ejection systolic is there ejection systolic we saw in a right a p a right a and p aortic stenosis pulmonary stenosis okay early diastolic was also a so here it was regurgitation aortic regurgitation pulmonary regurgitation right pan systolic mitral regurgitation tricuspid regurgitation and mid diastolic was mitral stenosis and aortic stenosis right 
so here the same is given that is mid systolic late systolic pan systolic right early diastolic mid diastolic and late diastolic now coming to continuous murmur continuous murmur is seen in patent ductus atriosus as seen in congenital rubella syndrome this is the most common question asked that is continuous murmur in pda patent ductus atriosus it can also be seen as mammary uh, shuffle of the pregnancy okay uh, which is mostly seen in the late third trimester late third trimester we can see uh, see this murmur okay and also venous hum venous hum we can see it now coming to some special names or special named murmurs okay austin flint murmur austin flint murmur is heard in aortic regurgitation a for a austin flint in aortic regurgitation caricum murmur is also known as uh, is found in uh, acute rheumatic heart disease acute rheumatic heart disease the murmur found is known as caricum's murmur caricum's murmur now the continuous raw long and rumbling murmur which is also known as machinery murmur is seen in patent ductus atriosus patent ductus atriosus here the murmur will be continuous and it will be a machinery murmur so machinery murmur in patent ductus atriosus and also gibson murmur is also found in pda Graham still murmur is found in pulmonary artery hypertension PAH pulmonary artery hypertension so these were the named murmurs Austin Flint Austin Flint in aortic regurgitation caricoms caricoms in rheumatoid uh, acute rheumatic heart disease machinery murmur in PDA Gibson murmur also in PDA Graham still murmur in pulmonary artery hypertension right now we will see like some special features or whatever uh, clinical conditions we can find associated with the specific type of murmur okay in aortic stenosis in aortic stenosis we will see syncope syncope happening okay in aortic uh, regurgitation we can see nocturnal angina nocturnal angina to be found okay in mitral stenosis there will be hemoptysis malar flushes and mitral phases this will be specific to mitral stenosis in mitral regurgitation we will see mostly fatigue is the complaint so special type of pulses found in aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation in aortic stenosis it is known as pervus et turdus pervus et turdus so this will be the typical type of pulse which is also known as anacrotic pulse that is decreased in amplitude and late peak it is known as pervus et turdus and in aortic regurgitation we can see bisferens pulse bisferens pulse that be there will be a double peak so pervus et turdus in aortic stenosis and bisferens pulse in aortic regurgitation right aortic regurgitation in tricuspid stenosis regurgitation we can how uh, see a loud systolic murmur and also pulsatile lever pulsatile lever so whenever pulsatile lever is found you uh, have to suspect tricuspid regurgitation is there or not okay now coming to when will this murmurs increase and when will they decrease right so right side murmur will increase on inspiration r i is there so i for inspiration inspiration in right we find i so increases on inspiration and in left left side murmurs will increase on expiration will increase on expiration okay now let's see on valsalva what happens okay and on valsalva maneuver and also on standing it will decrease the preload it will decrease the preload so most of the intensity of the most of the murmurs will decrease because the blood flow through the valves will decrease but exception is hocm hocm and mitral valve prolapse right so 
mitral valve prolapse and hocm murmur will increase on valsalva or standing so the mnemonic here is vast v a s t so standing valsalva and amyl nitrate this hocm murmur and mvp mitral valve prolapse murmur will increase will increase others mostly decrease but hocm murmur and mvp murmur will increase on vast vast st for standing a for amyl nitrate v for valsalva okay now how to differentiate hocm and mvp hocm will increase in intensity hocm murmur will increase in intensity but the mitral valve prolapse will increase in duration the duration of murmur will increase and here the intensity will increase intensity will increase right now what squatting squatting what happens the venous return will increase so the volume of blood will increase that is preload after load both increase so stenotic murmur as well as regurgitation murmur both will increase but hocm murmur will decrease right in hand grip what happens the resistance will increase so the forward flow will decrease but backward flow will increase if the uh, resistance is given the forward flow will be hampered right so regurgitation murmur will increase right backward flow will be there more blood will be backward flowed again so regurgitation murmur will increase but the stenotic murmur will decrease as the forward flow is hampered forward flow is hampered so stenotic murmur will decrease right so let's see the chart see here on on uh, increased preload that is in rapid squatting or uh, leg raising most of the murmur will increase right if there is decreased preload that is on valsalva and standing most of the murmurs will decrease in hand grip that is after load is increased the stenotic murmur will decrease and the regurgitation murmur will increase right because the forward flow is uh, decreased but the backward flow will be increased in decreased after load the opposite will happen that is the stenotic murmur will increase and the regurgitation murmur will decrease okay and now the special cases are mitral valve prolapse mitral valve prolapse and hocm right mitral valve prolapse and hocm hocm and mitral valve prolapse will increase with vast right vast V A S T. So, what was V A S T? Valsalva, standing, and amyl nitrate. So, see here, it increases on valsalva, it increases on amyl nitrate, and increases on standing. Okay, M V P and H O C M. How will we differentiate? H O C M will increase in intensity, right? Intensity, and M V P will increase in the duration. Duration will increase. Okay. Again, the same is shown here. HOCM and MVP increases on VAST, VAST, okay, and all other murmurs will decrease. See, all other murmurs mostly decrease on Valsalva. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Do like, share, and subscribe to this channel to get more videos of this kind.